What's good, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Smoking and Grilling with me, AB. I know you read that title. Hey, listen, I gotta just start off by saying this. This is probably like in the top three videos that's most requested. Everybody wants to know just how to use a charcoal grill, right? So look, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be using my Weber kettle grill. Listen, we're not gonna try to reinvent a wheel because you really can't. Listen, they didn't made this, and this represents probably more so than what most people have, you know, throughout the country. You know what I mean? Probably the world. You know, everybody got some type of kettle style charcoal grill. So look, I'm not gonna over talk it. We finna break right into it. And this video right here is just about the how and the why. Once you understand that, no matter who video you are watching, whether you watch watching mine or somebody else's, when you follow some of these videos, it just makes sense. Let's talk about starting a fire, right? So I got myself a chimney. Listen, it's worth it to spend a little couple of extra dollars. These are not that expensive. Get yourself one of these. Go ahead and fill this up. I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna fill it up and I'm gonna show you how we light it. All right. So, I just filled this up right here. You can see right here, let me get it out in the sun. Look, this is just some regular, you know, charcoal. You see that? I can fill it all the way up, but I'm not. I'm only gonna cook after I get through doing this video. I'm gonna make me some burgers. This is more than enough for burgers and dogs. Now, let's talk about starting. If you're starting a fire, I recommend you guys get these. These right here work so good. But any pre-starter to your charcoal, you put this underneath your, you put this underneath your chimney. Look, that's what these look like. See that right there? Now look, I'm gonna show you, man, it's so simple. You know what I mean? We are gonna put this here. I'm gonna light it, right? Once it's lit, all I do is I take my chimney, I put this over the top, and we let that start, you know, to start the fire underneath. Now I added this little extra part right here because we all got a little pyro in us, right? So look, I like to look, you know, and see that fire, see the flame, you see the smoke, and that lets you know right there that them charcoals are getting nice and hot. Okay, so while we have our chimney, the coals are starting to uh, get hot, catch a flame. Let me go ahead and explain this part to you down here on the bottom. Look, I'm gonna show you like this. One of the reasons why I tell you you can't reinvent the wheel, because listen, they didn't put everything into it and the science behind it. One of the things is, listen, when the ashes or when your coals turn to ash, you go ahead and move this across like this. Once you get it to drop down on the bottom, if you squeeze this, all your ashes come out into this little tray right here. You can't beat that. So let me put this back. Got that back, right? I want to show you this. Now this is where we're going to learn how to control our heat. It's going to be controlled down here on the bottom. Now, this is actually a vent also. So listen, if we do like this, I'm going to show you in just one second. This is all the way closed. Now you'll see in some other videos, people make these little notches right here to say this is where they like to put it. I know where mine is, so I never put a Sharpie on it. But listen, it vents it. So when you open this up, it lets more in, more air in. You see this little symbol right here? So listen, when you starting to open this up, it's drawing air through here. It's coming through here. It's passing over the coals. It's just like stoking the fire. You put more air on it, it's heating it up. Got it? If it's closed, we're going to choke it. We're going to suffocate the air, which is going to bring the temperature down. I'm just showing you this. Now I'm getting ready. I'm going to show you once we put the coals inside the tray inside, inside the slow here, I'm going to show you that too. And then I'm going to show you exactly when I have it closed, what it looks like, and then when I have it open, what it looks like. Okay, look, I want to show you this part now. You remember when I showed you what it looks like when it's closed? So when I move that over, this is all the way closed. Look at the little fin. See this moving right here? That's closed, then when you start venting it, look, you see that opening down there? That's where it's drawing the air. Is it making sense? You wanna, get, listen, so if you cut it like this a little bit, that, that's a certain amount. But that's how we controlling the airflow, and I'm gonna be putting the charcoals over here. Right, so with the charcoal over here, and this open just a little bit or a lot, it's gonna have the air pull this way, and then when I put the top on, Listen, this is how we gonna control it also. So, you close this, choke the bottom if it's too hot, right? Till we get the temperature to drop down. Then, once we have it set, we can control it like this. This is just letting some more to draw out. It's drawing from the bottom, coming out through the top. And, they have a little thermometer right here on the top. I'm gonna show you guys what accessories you need. We're getting ready to set this up. 
and I'll show you what I'm gonna do after I set them up. And I'm gonna show you, if you don't have a slowing here like what I have right here, which has a water trough in there, I'm gonna give you guys some options where if you don't have that, you can put something inside this to hold your briquettes back on this side. Okay, the coals are ready. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up the flame, but you see how they're starting to turn white on the top, on the edges like that, that's fine. And then if you look deep down in there, it should be that red. You know that these right here are lit. Even the ones that are not fully lit, once I put them in the side right here, I'll just move these over like this. Now, you can see how that one's not fully lit, right? Just the edges trying to catch and this backside like that doesn't make a difference because once you put them in like this, those will be, those become hot. Now, if you look down at the bottom, I'm cracking the vent just so that I can get some airflow down in there so we can get air to pass over the briquettes. Okay, we'll put the grate on, right? Now, let's talk about zones. Look. This is direct heat over the coals. And from here on, this is indirect. Now, look, it's set up like this. You got the direct side, that's the side that's over the heat. Then you got the indirect. Now listen, you wanna cook all your meats mostly over the indirect side. Listen, that right there is where you don't have no flare ups, no burns, or nothing like that. So that's the side you wanna use. Let's just, I'm gonna use an example of chicken thighs. We all like to put chicken thighs on the grill, right? Super delicious, juicy, all of that. I see a lot of people making a mistake when they don't set up zones on their grill. What they do is, I've seen people, a lot of people, even to this very day, they'll fill this bottom down here with nothing but uh, charcoal and have the whole thing hot, right? So if you're doing chicken, if you're doing some chicken thighs, you put it down, listen, as they start to heat up, the fat from the chicken drops down and when it hits these charcoals right here, what happens? You get a flare up and that causes it to burn. So just about everybody that's been on the grill has burnt chicken one time or another, right? So if you put it on this side with the heat over here, so as it drips down, what does it do? It doesn't drip on the, uh, the charcoal and you do not, listen to this, you don't get no flare ups and you don't burn. It's all about the internal tip of your meat or you know, your food period, as opposed to like people asking me in my comments sometimes, they ask me like, how long? It's so many variables, you can never ever tell nobody how long, nothing. Even cooking on a stove, because what I say is high, your high might be, not be the same as my high, medium, low, stuff like that. So listen, we gotta cook and make sure our food is having internal temp temperature. Now, this is why I tell you the slow and sear is so cool, because they have a trough right there. You see that trough? That trough right there is where I can put water in there. If I was doing a long cook, you need to have a little moisture in there, right? If you're doing chicken, I see you people filling that up. I don't personally put no water inside that trough on an hour cook, but if I'm trying to put a brisket on here, you know what I mean? If I'm doing ribs and we having something, you know, something like that, then I fill that up because we're going to want to have a little moisture. Now, let me go over some things that'll make your life super easy as far as like your cleanup goes. Now, we're going to call this setup number one. We're going to lose, use our imagination because we're going to say, we're going to look at this as if it was no slow and sear, right? We just got charcoal set up on one side. We got a brick keeping the charcoals to one side. This is direct and this is indirect, right? So you want to get yourself a pan. And this is just a half pan. It's going to serve two purposes, right? Listen, if it's a long cook, we put water inside of here, right? So that, that way we can keep some moisture inside the chamber. Now, if it's a short cook, hamburgers, uh, chicken, you know, things of that nature, uh, hot dog, stuff like that, you put this in there, you don't need any water, you put that inside of there, and what that does is, this catches all of the drippings and it keep, makes for great, you know, easy cleanup, right? So that's setup number one. Tray off to the side, charcoals on this side. If it's a long cook, we put water in there. And if it's a short cook, we don't put no water in there. We just put it on this side so it can help with the cleanup. Now, for setup number two, listen, if you get yourself a slow and sear, you already have something that's gonna keep your, your coals to this side, right? And it, got, it has this water trough. So that takes care of the water, the moisture, if needed, if it's a long cook. And this right here, it's a barrier also, a divider that keeps all your coals to this side. But we still gonna put a pan in here like that. Cause look, when we got our meat over here, we don't want all our drippings to be dripping down in the bottom. We'd rather them to come here, then you can just throw this away. It helps with the cleanup. So this right here, the way you see it, not, not using your imagination, the way you see it, slow and sear, and the pan like that, underneath now, this is what we call setup number two. 
Okay, now we're gonna use our imagination again. Look, we got chicken, it's over here on the indirect side, right? We holding 350 degrees, so it would be just like this. Right? We looking at this, this saying 350 or whatever, but we need to check the internal time, you know, temperature of the meat, right? So don't forget this part. When it comes to cooking, even, even, even if you're cooking it in the oven, listen, it's about what's happening inside, that's how you make perfect food. So listen, we gotta be able to have some type of weight so we can check the internal temperature, right? So, if you get yourself one of these instant reads, you just pull this out like that, you'll see it'll just come on automatically just by it coming out and it's a start reading. We need to insert this into the center of our meat and that'll give us the temperature, right? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. This is all key. Pay attention to this part right here. We opened it up. Our food is over here on the indirect side. We're gonna take this, we're gonna stick this in the inside, and it's gonna start reading our internal temperature, right? Now, meanwhile, this is open. All of our heat that we built up had to wait till it stabilized and everything, and then we got our temperature just right so we can start saying it's cooking. We letting all the heat out right now. Now I'm gonna show you something. Look at this. If you looking, you ain't cooking. That's just like the truest thing ever. Now, these are cool. Get one of these anyway, but I'm gonna tell you what you gotta, I'm gonna tell you where you become a pro at, and that's this right here. Look, that's the meat stick. This is just a bridge, you know what I mean? It works with an app on your phone. Now this is not no review, but I'm gonna explain this part to you and it's really gonna make sense. You insert this inside of your meat. So I'll use my hand as the meat. We would insert this inside, right? Once this is inside the meat, this tells us what's happening inside, right? And then this part up here will read the ambient temperature inside. So this will tell us how hot it is right around our chicken. So if this says 350, you don't need to take, you know, worry about what it says on the kettle grill. This right here reads to your app. And if you can maintain 350 like, you know, like it is in the oven, then boom, you're gonna have the great tasting food. Now, we're gonna go over some of the utensils. All right, so look, now we're gonna go over the utensils. Most of the time when you see them like in the store, they come in like a little tri-pack. You're gonna get yourself a fork, spatula, and some tongs, right? Hey, but I'm gonna say it like this. Because, of, you know, barbecue utensils is like super popular, everybody makes something, you know, so it's customizable. Like you can see right here, this right here, you see what it says. It's got the LA representing where I was born and raised. Hey, so got this, you can get your favorite football team, you can get your initials, you can get whatever you wanna get. And I want you to look at all three of these and tell me what do you see? What, what do they all have in common? If you didn't figure that out, look, they long, and they long for a reason. If you get something short, you know what I mean, and your hand is over this heat, it's gonna burn. So look, you can work your tongs like this. You can work here. We can turn, I use these, this is my second, this is my extension for my hand. And the same thing with my spatula, it's just long, where even if I did fill the bottom with it and I was doing everything flame broiled or something like that, you know what I mean? I'm able to get to it without putting my hand over the direct heat. Now, I'm gonna show you guys some of the options. Right here, this is pecan wood, right? You can go ahead and get these chunks. You can pick these up at your local uh, Home Depot. Anywhere that sells barbecue, accessories, everybody usually has, you know, like chunks, pellets, and things like that. So, you wanna get yourself some chunks, you open it up, and then all you do is set these on top. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky and we gotta pay attention, right? Because when you put them on there, it doesn't take long for those to flare up. You see that fire? Listen, that's gonna change, you know, the temperature inside your grill. All you do is leave it vented the way you had it, and you let it settle down. But, just wanna show you guys, look, adding some wood chunks to it, and you know, things like that, give it different flavors, and this right here, uh, you'll be on your way to becoming a grill master. And I'm a, hey, there's no way I can tell you this without being truthful with you. You gotta put your time in with the grill. But the way you don't get discouraged is you set those zones up and you do not cook over the fire and we start learning right there. After that, you, you take something away from each time you do it and then you can look at it and you can go from there. Now you saw the wood was on there and started to catch a little fire, right? Can you see it right there? You see it coming out of here? You can see it coming out. It's not super insulated, so you'll see it coming out the edge or whatever. And listen, you can smell it. I don't need to pull it this way. I can smell the pecan burning and starting to smolder. And look, that right there will get into your food and create a great taste. So, again, you remember, listen, if we looking, we ain't cooking. 
that we using one of them meat sticks, you know what I mean? Once you have that meat stick in there, you don't have to open it up. You can see how hot it is, because remember, that started a fire. So all of that changes and makes the temperature of your fire and the temperature inside your grill, you know, fluctuate. So you just want to stay on top of it. If you got that, you're able to read what's happening inside and what's happening with your meat. Remember, down at the bottom, when you look down here at the bottom, we want a vent, right? We set our vent, and once you have it and you're able to maintain, I suggest you guys get a Sharpie and do it, make a mark, and you can say, okay, this is where I like to start at, this is where I hold this temperature or whatever, but you make your marks. You have this set, because remember, the air is coming in through here. It's going to pass over your charcoal. Once it comes to your charcoal, it rolls over the top, and it comes out here. You can see it. That tells you right now it's working. Hey, so listen, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell everybody out here. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And now I'm about to go get my hot dogs and hamburgers, and I'm finna get it in.